In this video, we present an exclusive recap of expert insights on the current trends and challenges in Kazakhstan. Throughout these interviews, you'll hear from leaders in economics, business, and international relations. How is Kazakhstan navigating geopolitical challenges, attracting investments, and adapting to changing circumstances? Find the answers in our compilation of opinions from the Astana Times. I started coming to the country in 2000, 2001, um, and uh, so I've seen the development of Kazakhstan mm -hmm. post-Soviet Union and how it was just a miracle in the region. And it still is, by the way. This is still one of the most important economies in the region. Others try, but we continue, Kazakhstan continues to be a beachhead. Mm -hmm. You know, Kazakhstan is vulnerable to geopolitical uh, trends. Mm -hmm. Obviously, what happened in, in Russia and the war of Russia in the, in the Ukraine, mm -hmm. Um, uh, many investors got concerned, where would Kazakhstan stand in between that? Mm -hmm. And I think Kazakhstan astutely, Kazakhstan astutely managed their independent view and almost their neutrality, but while still being able to be, you know, friendly with their neighbors, mm -hmm. but still saying, no, I'm not recognizing these, 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 these the sovereign entities yeah. that you want me to. And navigating that takes a lot of intelligence. A, t a lot of EQ and IQ, mm -hmm. so well done government. And I think that when people started seeing that, that Kazakhstan can um, hold its course and what they think is right, mm -hmm. you notice that interest still continued. So that differentiation was astute and the management with aplomb. Moving from Kazakhstan's international reputation and geopolitical resilience, we now shift to an analysis of the country's economic achievements. Highlighting these successes is the Dean of the Graduate School of Business at Nazarbayev University, who offers valuable insights. When we look at the numbers, we know that there has been quite a lot of investment, especially also in the transportation sector and the storage sector, so logistics in other words. So, Kazakhstan was able to take over a little bit the role of the logistic hub to supply the rest of Central Asia, which perhaps before was in Russia and with the Russian war, things have moved here. So that's an example where I think Kazakhstan was successful in attracting and, and taking advantage of the situation. But I think to pick uh, uh, one uh, example which is often under discussion, what the central bank has been doing in Kazakhstan, I think that's, that's, that's really a, an example of, 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 of great success. If you look at the performance in terms of GDP growth of last year, it's fabulous, 5%. Uh, last year was one of the most successful years to attract foreign direct investment in Kazakhstan. There was an increase of more than 80% in foreign direct investment and a lot of them were greenfield investments, so first-time investors. Um, and they are not restricted to just the traditional sectors that we think of, oil and gas, yeah, we know. No, it's very important that we also attract here in Kazakhstan investments in other sectors. And so, for instance, Kia Motors, mm -hmm. they have invested a substantial amount here in Kazakhstan to set up an assembly plant with uh, more than 1,500 potential jobs. Um, we've seen investments of Italian companies in, uh, in machine textiles, and especially for insulation material uh, to produce, uh, produce that, which feeds in, in the construction sector. And so we have a lot of examples. While Kazakhstan experiences economic growth and a surge in investments, the country is also confronting significant social and demographic challenges. An associate professor at Nazarbayev University sheds lights on these developments and their impact. Tens of thousands, actually hundreds of thousands of Russian men mostly, but also families that came into Kazakhstan within a really short, of, short period of time. And this drove up rent for prices and it caused people to be really nervous. Um, so that's been one of the big impacts, I think. Um, of course, recently in the last year, you see the introduction of a visa-free regime with China um, for business travel. So I think those are the big kind of developments that have happened recently that, um, and they have to do with of, often really quite geopolitical events. Um, though Kazakhstan, I think, 
reacts in its own way, right? It's not that Kazakhstan has no choices because it's just the recipient of these sorts of geopolitical factors. So the idea that Kazakhstan has limited choices because we're right between Russia and China, I don't know. I don't think that that actually gives Kazakhstan the credit that it has due um, because it actually is quite adept at maneuvering and adapting to all of the different things that are going on around it and doing things in the country that matter a lot for the people in the country that have nothing to do with what's going on outside. When discussing ongoing reforms and the improvement of the business climate, it's crucial to understand how Kazakhstan is adapting to new conditions. A country is like a business, you know, everything is uh, evolving. It's like a living organism. You improve continuously. The moment you stop improving, you are going behind because other countries in the world are improving. And uh, the world is uh, is our backyard. The world has become so small. So companies have opportunity to invest anywhere. They can go to Vietnam, they can go to South Africa, they can go to Kazakhstan. So they compare all the countries towards each other. So if a country stops reforming and stops uh, increasing the, um, or improving the business uh, climate, then actually you're going behind versus the other countries. So Kazakhstan has very rightly so, um, had a very uh, active reforms in the last couple of years. We're all, um, we're all very happy with the, the reforms. Um, so the, the climate, business climate is even getting better than it already was. Uh, there's no such thing as an ideal business climate. Yes? So we're not there yet. It's a work in process. But um, the government is listening to the business community, listening to the foreign investors uh, very carefully and implementing uh, these uh, ideas and uh, propositions uh, into future future laws and, um, and uh, regulations.